Hey, this is Brad from Argali, and I am getting ready to go on a late season mule deer hunt, and I'm gonna show you all the gear I pack for this hunt, including a few things that I don't take on late season hunts in order to save weight and space in my pack. Okay, so I'm getting ready to go on a week-long backpack mule deer hunt in the mountains here of Idaho in November. So it's gonna be cold, or at least I have to be prepared for deep snow, cold weather, and I'm gonna show you kind of everything I bring as well as some of the things I don't bring. So in November, as opposed to October or September, I make some different gear choices in terms of what I leave behind as well as what I bring in order to be prepared and be able to withstand the elements as well as to be able to bring colder weather gear so I can be comfortable uh, in that cold weather if you do run into deep snow and cold weather. So. Um, first, I'm going to start off with something that I do that is maybe a little bit unique um, in that I don't bring a fuel canister stove, so I don't bring a jet boil, I don't bring an MSR that saves you the weight and the space uh, of having to bring uh, a fuel stove as well as a canister uh, with fuel in it. And what I do is I bring a wood stove and I bring a titanium cup. And that's, what, that's all I use is this wood stove in order to heat water. Um, it's worked well for me. Um, it was, took me a little bit of like mental adjustment to get used to the idea of not bringing a jet boil style stove with me on these late season hunts, but I much prefer it. And it, what it really does too is it forces you to just like build a fire and get warm every morning. And you build in a little extra time, but it is completely worth it in my opinion. Um, so, and it's really simple. You know, all you need is a titanium cup and a wood stove um, with a flat top on it so you can heat water up on it and I can still eat my dehydrated meals um, and, and make coffee in the morning just by getting a fire going. So that's one of the things that I do and as I, as I talk about this gear, since I've got a lot here, I'm gonna start moving some of these things off the table so I can reduce some of the clutter. Uh, that I like to do late season, and this is our Skyline TI stove with a short little stove pipe just for uh, visual effect there. Um, with my backpack, uh, so this is the XO 7200 in the K4 platform. Um, I need a, this is the only time of year where I take this uh, big bag, uh, but I really do kind of need it to fit all my, all my stuff here. And I've got a couple of side pockets on the hip belt and the water bottle holster here, um, which uh, obviously are handy for just uh, keeping close items um, to you. I'll go over how I pack everything to pack here uh, at the end of this video, but for now I just wanna show you kinda of everything else. Um, I'm gonna start with clothes. So I take a fair amount of clothes on these late season trips. Um, we've got a full list of everything in the video description, so if you wanna see everything, you can. I just wanna explain some of the rationale or my thinking behind my clothing system. Um, so on the bottom though, I like to carry, um, these are the First Light Furnace three quarter length zip off long johns. I really like zip off long johns, particularly in the late season. And I like these really warm guys, uh, just because you don't have to take your pants and your boots off completely to take your long underwear on and off. Um, when it's cold out and there's snow on the ground, uh, the zip off long underwear is just like, it's a game changer if you haven't done it yet, because you can just, Take your pants, you know, pull them down, and then pull your long underwear off if you get hot and put them in your backpack, pull your pants right back up. Your boots can stay on the entire time. Uh, quite handy to have. Um, and then I, um, I use these uh, fleece-lined uh, Catalyst Foundry pants from uh, First Light. Um, really like the durability um, and the warmth from these. They can be warm um, for me. Um, if the temperatures do go up, so I have to really keep an eye on the weather before I leave, but I would say 95% of the time when it hits November and I'm doing a mountain hunt, um, these are the pants I'm gonna wear. Pair them with these three quarter length long johns as well as a tall sock, um, and you get full leg coverage underneath your pants and you can be down into the single digit weather and be really, really comfortable um, for walking around in the mountains. So great, great uh, bottom layer combo. Um, obviously, Gators are a must have. Um, I also take uh, the Omen rain, line, rain jacket. You know, usually I'm not getting rain, you're getting heavy snow, but if you get snow for day on end, excuse me, days on end, having like a, a heavier weight uh, rain jacket that can withstand uh, the elements is I think really important to keeping everything else underneath dry. 
And then when it comes to uh, puffy layers, um, I've got the Chamberlain jacket, which is a really, uh, a, a, I would say like a heavily insulated down jacket. So it's really warm, but I also like to take a smaller down jacket. So um, I like to take more down layers than wool layers on these late season hunts to try and trap that warm air next to my body. And I can layer the Brooks down layer jacket under the, under the Chamberlain on those early mornings, when, especially when I'm sitting glassing uh, for long periods of time. And usually on a November mule deer hunt, you're sitting a lot. Um, so you need to have some layers that can really keep you warm while you're sit sitting there. So those are my, my top layers. Um, the last thing I want to show you is my like glove system. I also layer my gloves. Um, so rather than take like one really warm pair of gloves, I like to be able to have different, different uh, pieces that I can layer over the top of each other, depending on what I'm doing. So if I'm if I'm hiking and it's cold out, I don't want to have just bare hands because I'm going to start getting my hands are going to start getting really cold. So I've got uh, these liner gloves and then these Catalyst soft shell gloves, which have a fleece liner. With these two, um, these are what I consider like my like walking around active layer gloves that I wear during the day. And then when I sit down to glass, I pull out the Brooks Down mitts. Um, with all three of these, my hands will stay really warm whether I'm hiking, moving, or glassing. So just a couple uh, layering things I like to do. And then uh, for my top, you know, this is all just like um, uh, base layer, kill mid layer, and then a heavier weight uh, wool mid layer. And then of course, like a wool beanie. Um, you can find all this stuff in the, in the video description, but clothing and layering in this late season and efficiencies are really important just because all this stuff adds up in weight and space. Um, and it gets kind of annoying when you have to pack it all around, especially on this trip where I'm going to be packing probably around like seven to eight miles to get to our, our uh, high camp. Um, okay, so trekking poles, um, these are a must, uh, particularly for me. I, I use them year round, but even on, especially in these late season hunts where cold, icy, snowy mountain slopes, I feel like you just need a pair of trekking poles. I'm taking our Carbon X. I'm also taking our Quick Shot adapter and our X3 adapter. Um, the Quick Shot adapter, I just keep attached on this hunt to the trekking poles I'm hiking around just in case I need it. Um, I don't even notice it's there while I'm hiking around, so it's pretty uh, pretty handy. And then obviously the X3 adapter um, goes into the, can go into the trekking pole as well for glassing if I need it as well. So, um, all right, let me cover sleep system. So I've got the Xped Sinmat uh, HL Winter mat right here. So this is their, uh, I think it's like an R7 rating. So that's the other important thing winter conditions. Uh, I'm going to carry a really warm bag. I've got a, my feathered friends, Raven 10 degree bag over here, but uh, a warm bag without a warm pad is kind of useless. So you got to make sure, um, and I learned this the hard way because I used to try and get away with a super, super light pad um, years ago and realized like I was shivering, even though I had a zero degree bag out. Um, so pad is really important. You need an insulated pad. Um, I really like this, uh, these X-Ped pads. So great pad. Um, bag combo. Um, and then I've got our Abzaroka tent and our Skyline stove with a six foot stove pipe. So the tent, uh, stove pipe, um, and the stove itself. Uh, I'm going with a buddy. So we're going to split up. So these will be, uh, I call like the tent and the stove or kind of communal items that we're going to split up. Um, I also am not taking a center pole on this trip because I know um, that there are lots of small trees, like dead trees around. So I'm just gonna find one and cut it to length for our center pole. Um, I will tell you, I also forgot, I usually take a small folding silky saw or silky style saw, and I forgot that today. But that's another one of the communal items that uh, I will split up with my buddy. So if somebody takes a saw, so we've got something to cut firewood with, we've got the stove, we've got the tent, split those items up and uh, you only have to carry a little bit of weight and but you can have a really comfortable uh, camp setup. So, um, and then of course, uh, Tyvek ground sheet. Um, let me go over my food system because the food late season is kind of complicated for me because this is the heaviest thing I carry overall. It's just my food. And so I like to do breakfast for me in the mornings. I don't do any water. Um, that's the other thing is where this particular trip, we're gonna be a ways from water. Um, so I don't like to, if I, I try and minimize the amount of water I need 
in my food so I can save as much as, as possible for drinking. So my breakfast are just two perfect bars. I love these things. Um, they pack down, that sort of thing is like, you get you know, six days worth of these perfect bars. They're relatively small pack size compared to uh, maybe six dehydrated meals with all the packaging that comes with them. Um, even if I take the dehydrated meals out of the, the packaging, they come in and put them in um, uh, freeze dry bags and, and uh, take all the air out of them and vacuum seal them. They're still gonna be fairly bulky. So this helps save some bulk, great amount of calories. They're also just amazing tasting. Um, so love those things. And then I do one dehydrated meal a day and that's just for dinner. Um, the peak refuel stuff, still my, still my favorite stuff. And then for lunches, I've got an assortment of bars here. Um, I have been uh, getting really tired this year of some of the bars that I eat a lot of. So I've been really conscious of trying to have a variety of, of flavors of things in my lunches while still also maintaining consistent calorie consumption uh, across the board. So, um, so each day for lunch, um, I have two RX bars. I have one Pro Bar. Um, this is a Honey Stinger Nut and Seed Bar. I've got, these are called Protein Pucks. And then I got a Larry's Cookie. Um, so this is my, this is all I eat during the day. Um, it's actually quite a lot. There's a lot of calories packed into here. Uh, but I really don't like being hungry during the day. So, um, but I try and shoot for that 1.8 pounds-ish a day for uh, food total. And I can get there with, um, this is like enough food. And then hopefully at some point I shoot a deer and then uh, on this trip, and then you can kind of eat on that deer as well to kind of supplement, supplement your diet. So, all right, uh, moving along. Um, I'm gonna talk about optics. So this is the uh, 65 mil Vortex Razor Spotter for mule deer. Um, it's just so hard um, in big wide open country for me to not take a spotter with me so I can get a really good look at uh, deer. So I'm taking that along with the uh, UHD 10 by 42 binos. Uh, I've got my FHF gear bino harness, my rangefinder uh, on the side here. Also, this is um, the first time I've ever used this. This is, I think, the FHF Aspis, I think is what they call it. But this holds my uh, Spartan uh, Precision uh, bipod in the bottom of my um, rangefinder pouch, which is, or excuse me, my bino harness, which is really helpful. Uh, and then I've got my, um, of course, my outdoorsman's bino tripod adapter, which I pretty much never leave home without, which goes right in the front of my bino harness here. And then I've got a set of our high country bags um, for this hunt. And then I've got, uh, so I've got my Nosler Mountain Carbon. This is a 6.5 Creedmoor with a Vortex uh, Razor HD 3 to 15 uh, scope on top. This is honestly, I, I have used this, this exact rifle setup for a while now. I love it. Um, I put bigger scopes on there to try them out. I just find that it's just, you know, more than I need for um, pretty much any Western hunt. So this is like my ideal uh, setup right here um, in terms of like weight and everything. I just love this setup and that rifle can, can shoot really, really well. Um, you might be wondering what this is on the barrel. Um, so this is what I do for to keep moisture, snow, rain out of my barrel. Um, it's a super low tech solution. I know there are like barrel rifle covers out there you can buy. Um, I just don't personally feel the need to buy any of them. This is just a finger off of a rubber glove. That's all that is with some red electrical tape. Um, you don't even have to take it off to shoot. I shoot right out of this thing. So I cover my barrel, put a little electric, electrical tape over that finger on that glove. Um, I will take a couple extra glove fingers with me in case this one gets torn on a branch or something, but it works incredibly well. Um, and you can just shoot right through it. So I don't have to take a cover off in the heat of the moment to go shoot. And that's why I like it. Um, and no, it doesn't affect the trajectory of your bullet. I've done it plenty of times um, and it shoots just fine. Um, so great little rifle setup. And then I'm only gonna take, uh, I've got some of these uh, Nosler Acubon bullets here, which shoot really well out of this rifle. Um, I'm only gonna take eight bullets total on this trip. Um, Usually don't need anywhere near that many, but it also forces you to make good choices when you don't have a whole lot of bullets. All right, let's go other miscellaneous items. I've got our Serac knife. It's part of my kill kit. 50 foot of paracord for whatever I need paracord for, tying down the tent. 
from storms, um, hanging game bags, whatever. Um, 2.4 mil paracord, long handled spoon. Um, I've got battery and extra headlamp batteries. So late season, the days are so much shorter than they are in September. So you end up spending a lot of time in the morning and the evening um, moving around, hiking, hanging out in the tent. So you end up burning through batteries a lot more. It's also colder, so your battery life is a lot shorter. So um, fresh batteries in my headlamp, three extra batteries. Uh, that I know that can get me through uh, seven days of uh, being out. So um, that's that. And then I also take um, three lighters with me because I don't have a, a stove with me, a canister stove. I need to be able to get a fire going every single morning and every single night. So I need to prioritize fire building. So I take three lighters with me and I also take um, fire starter with me. Um, I have, these are Vaseline soaked cotton balls. So I take these um, and where we're going, I've been in this area before. And the other thing I, uh, I know there are uh, old like duck fir and grand fir trees that have hard hardened pine pitch. That makes for a phenomenal fire starter. That's a, a trick that my buddy Charlie Cronk taught me. He's a firefighter, he knows these things. Um, so I will go scavenge. In addition to this, I, we will go scavenge for uh, hardened pine pitch um, once we get up in there and then we will sort of store, keep a bag full of that stuff for fire starter. If I was going to an area that I wasn't sure had um, you know, that hardened pine pitch from those old fir trees, I would take more fire starter just to make sure that I can get a fire going in the morning in case you get wet weather. But that's really important on this trip. Um, and especially if you're gonna leave, leave a fuel canister stove at home, you gotta be able to get a fire going and you can't afford to just like fuss with it forever. Um, so just like know your, know where you're going um, and know the, know the kind of like environment you're in, you can kind of pack accordingly. Um, chapstick. Um, you can call me soft if you want, but chat when it's windy and cold, um, your lips bleed like mine do. This helps uh, license uh, and tag. Uh, I just take Aquamira drops uh, for water filtration uh, or water purification, I should say. I don't take a purifier. I've got my inReach. Um, and then I've got, uh, I am taking a cell phone uh, recharging battery. I hate taking these things because they're so heavy. Uh, but because I need it for my Onyx maps, like it's just kind of a necessity. Um, and then I've got my med kit in here. Um, again, I've got, I can go through a few things um, that I've got in here as well as my, uh, my tourniquet, which I've never had to use, but I carry it just in case. Um, so a couple things, which I've talked about these before. Um, uh, my medic makes a couple things that I really like um, that I think is worth uh, looking into. So these, uh, they call them Z-zips for cuts. I think these are like um, an alternative to stitches when you're in the back country. And essentially it works like uh, an adhesive strip that kind of zips, zip ties together. So if you get a, you know, you cut yourself on the arm and it needs stitches, um, and you're a ways away from anywhere. I, I have found these things to work incredibly well because I have had that happen before um, where you can just put one of those on, you can like cinch it together and it will hold that wound tight and shut. Um, so these are well worth it. And then uh, they make these, um, I'm blanking on the name of these super skin blister things. Um, these are great. I know they make these super skin patches. They look like a band-aid for blisters. I use them for gear repairs, all sorts of stuff. Um, you can also use them for blisters if you want. So I always carry a handful of those. I've got uh, um, a couple, I've got a little bit of Advil in here, some ibuprofen um, and a handful of like gauze and some other things in here, but super basic med kit um, that I take with me. Kodiak belt of ours, um, this is kind of a must have for me on any backpack hunt, particularly this late season hunt, where I'm gonna be a ways away from um, uh, any, sort of, uh, uh, any sort of truck or base camp, um, just for sharpening up my knife. Um, love to have that thing. Sunglasses, uh, I bring, I have four two liter platypus bladders I'm taking with me on this hunt, that's a lot. But also, uh, you gotta remember that I'm gonna be a ways away from a water source. I don't like to have to go to water every single day. So but with taking uh, four of these, I can go um, every two, maybe even three days if I'm uh, judicious about my water consumption. Um, so taking a lot of platy bladders with me. Uh, I got my butt pad. I got my slick uh, carbon fiber tripod with my outdoorsman's pan head. 
on top. And then I've got my Schnee's Beartooth uh, 200 gram insulation boots. I love like these Beartooth boots are some of my favorite just mountain boots in peri period. Um, 200 grams of insulation. It's like pretty good for late season hunts. Um, if it had 400, in my opinion, it would be even better. But 200 grams is really good and is better than not having any insulation as I, for some reason, um, seems like the older I get, the more a little bit insulation is really nice on those late season hunts. Um, I think, I think that's everything. I'm just trying to look at all the stuff here, but I think I've covered everything. Uh, so now let me just show you how I pack all this stuff into my pack. I'm not gonna pack, I'm gonna pack part of my like tent stove combo here, just so you get a sense of um, what I would carry. Um, but since my buddy's gonna be carrying some of this, I'm not gonna pack everything, but let me show you how I pack this up. So I'm gonna put all my small stuff in a little ditty sack just to keep it handy and organized. Except for my kill kit. So all that stuff is going in here. Including my med kit. Okay. Obviously I'm gonna be wearing my boots so I don't need to pack those in the tent. Trekking poles will go on the outside of the tent, so I'm gonna set those aside. A rifle will also go on the outside of the sleeping bit or of my uh, pack. So I'm gonna set that aside. Binos I will be wearing. <clears throat> Okay, food back in the bag. So I have, believe it or not, this is six full days worth of lunches, breakfasts, and dinners right here, okay? So that is gonna go, I'm gonna put that on the bottom of my bag. This is also always very hard to do on a table, so. Okay that down there. I'm gonna put this one back in the bag here. Also forgot to mention that this is, this stuff sack right here also uh, doubles as a pump sack for my sleeping mattress. Um, it's so much easier to use than blowing up your pad by yourself and doubles as a stuff sack, which is a really, really cool idea. All right, this is gonna go in here. Push it to the side. Okay, now I am going to put uh, a few of my clothing items in here that I won't be wearing while I'm hiking. So my Brooks Down jacket, Chamberlain Puffy. I'm gonna stuff these in between kind of the crevices of my food to take up the bottom of my bag here space really nicely. I'm really gonna shove those in and work them in the corners. Okay, sunglasses are gonna go in the pocket right here on the outside of the pack, along with my headlamp. Knife I put in my lid. It's right on the top here, so I've got access to it whenever I need it. Uh, game bags can go in one of these outside pouches here. along with a spotter. Set the tag on those things. Okay, um, bullets for now, I'm gonna put these, I would have three bullet, three rounds in my rifle when I'm actually out hunting and I'll keep the rest uh, uh, up here. So what I like to do is I keep three in my gun and I keep one extra in my pocket that way if things get western, I've got easy access to uh, one more round. Uh, butt pad is gonna go on the outside here of my pack. Okay. X3 adapter is gonna go in one of these outside pockets right here. Tie back, gonna go inside. Uh, 
Obviously this is gonna go on my bino harness, my Spartan Precision. I'll put the tent in here. All my miscellaneous items are going here. Platy bladders I'm gonna put on the outside, so if I end up needing to fill up while I'm hiking, they're available and accessible. Oh, sleeping pad. And then I'm gonna put rain jacket. So let me pull this up here so you can see it. So I'm gonna be wearing this. I might be wearing these, I'm not sure. But I won't be wearing all my gloves. I will be wearing this, my mid layer, my base layer. So gloves can go inside here, except for my liner gloves, rain jacket. I'm gonna put my mid layer in there just for fun. And then I've got to put titanium cup goes in my pack. I'm not organizing this very well, you guys. I'm just kind of dumping it in there. And then I'm gonna take the sleeping bag out of the case just so I can shove it down into the crevices inside my pack here. I don't like to leave it in the stuff sack. If you've watched any other videos, you know I don't like to do that. I think this is kind of a, I'm gonna pull this thing off the tape later so I can do this. I feel like this is a good way to kind of get your bag way down inside inside all the little crook nooks and crannies of your backpack. Still got plenty of room here for other stuff. Pack my stove pipe on top. Put my gators in here. And then I'm gonna take this because I use this as a, for a pillow at night. Okay. So we're gonna do that. I'm gonna put my lid on. And then we'll start attaching stuff to the outside. Okay. All right, let me show you what that looks like. So, as you can see, everything's pretty much inside of here. Uh, now, I'm gonna start attaching some stuff to the outside here. Got my tripod. And unfortunately on these late season trips, your backpack ends up looking a little, a little bit like a garage sale attached to the outside of your pack but that's just the way it is. Uh, I'm gonna lay this down flat, show you how I attach my rifle. Um, I've got this uh, XO uh, sling, which I realize has come undone here, but I'll show you, I'll show you kind of how it works. This works really well for attaching my rifle to the side of my pack. Um, I'm gonna attach my rifle here, just to the outside. But honestly, I just usually just strap this thing down to the side of my pack too. And it works just fine. Okay, so now I've got my uh, rifle attached to the side of the rifle, a rifle attached to the side of the backpack. Um, so everything else here, this will be on my bino harness. I'll be using my trekking poles. Let's just say uh, normally, if I'm hunting with somebody else, if you know if I carry the tent, they, they'll carry the stove or vice versa. But let's just pretend I'm going out by myself, so I have to carry my tent and my stove with me. I'll show you how I would just attach the stove here. And really, I, I would just attach it to the to the outside of my pack, just so I don't you know crush and ding up the stove. Um, I run the strap here on my backpack through the handle on our stove, and that really is that will keep it fairly secure. Just snug that down and then try and get my other strap around the bottom of it. And really that's all there is to it. So everything else I would have 
on me um, or be using while I'm hiking. So let me stand this up so you can see what it looks like. So we've got tripod, stove, rifle, all on the outside of my pack. And you can see, even with like what looked like a mess of gear, it all fits really well um, inside this pack and is doable. So that is my late season rifle mule deer kit. Um, by no means am I suggesting this is the best way or the only way uh, to pack for uh, this kind of hunt. This is a way that works for me, a way I've done a number of times. But if you saw something you didn't like or you have a question about or you think you uh, have a better idea for, uh, would love to hear your comments. So throw a comment in this video and I appreciate you watching uh, this far into the video.